Welcome back to YouTube. I have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews. And in today's video, I will share with you 40 new features and the changes in Android 12 that I didn't mention in my previous video after the official release. Before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel to reach my first 100k subscribers and keep creating the videos you are interested in. So without further ado, let's take a look at the new features. With Android 12, Google tweaked the haptic feedback in multiple areas throughout the OS. Previously, I mentioned the new ones added to the app drawer and the widget speaker when you drag your finger over the scroll bar. But we also got a shorter and more gentle haptic feedback for the quick camera access by double pressing the power button. So let's compare it with Android 11. <laughs> the same also applies to the time picker when you move the clock hands. In contrast, the charging feedback is longer in Android 12 to match the new charging animation. You might feel a slight difference in other areas too, but these are the most noticeable ones. Android 12 is backed with tons of new features, but some of them are not that obvious like taking long screenshots in Google Chrome. When you use the physical keys, you won't see the same capture more button like in other apps. To solve this, head over to Chrome Flags and look for scroll capture. Set the flag to enabled, relaunch your Google Chrome, and you are good to go. Next time you take a screenshot, it will work as expected. Next, on the 15th of October, Google released a new app called Security Hub that gets automatically installed on your Pixel phone via the Play Store. As per the description, it protects your phone, apps, Google account, and passwords by providing security settings and recommendations to improve your device security. This app is only available for Android 12 users. I tried to install it on my Pixel 4a running Android 11, but it said your device isn't compatible with this version. Also keep in mind right after installing the app on my Pixel 5, Google Pay contactless payments stopped working because my bootloader is unlocked, while it used to work just fine under the same condition before installing the app. So things will be a bit more strict when it comes to security on Android 12. Next, the bubbles got some visual tweaks. The app icon will change its position based on where the bubble is located on the screen to ensure full visibility, while in Android 11, it's always at the bottom right corner. When you tap to expand, the window is now narrower with more rounded corners, and the manage button has a fill color around it, which makes it much easier to see. The last thing to talk about in this chapter is the dark theme. With Material U, it's no longer using a pitch black background. However, it's dark gray with a color tint to match your device colors. For example, here's how the background adapts with the selected accent color under the wallpaper and the style app. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by cdkeyoffers.com. It's an online digital store that sells original Windows 10 and the office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 20% discount. As you see, you can get yourself a Windows 10 OEM key for $15.55, which is insanely cheap. Please check the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the review. Now let's talk about settings and I found a long list of new changes that I didn't mention before. Let's start with the app's settings. In Android 12, apps and notifications are two separate pages and instead of combining them together under the same one. And the first change we have here is called unused apps. Currently, I don't have any apps listed here, but I think this one will include any apps that I didn't use for a long time. So if you have anything listed under this page, please let me know in the comments if that matches my thoughts. Now let's go inside one of the apps to see more differences and I will choose Google app as an example. The first change is under mobile data and Wi-Fi. Now at the top, we have a filter that can show up to five months worth of data usage. Let's go back to the previous page and then go to battery. Android 12 has a totally different page. It includes three radio buttons to choose between unrestricted, optimized, or restricted. Previously to restrict an app, the option was kind of hidden. First, you tap on background restriction. It will show you an overlay card with a restrict button. And then to remove it, you do the same thing and then tap on remove. So it's much easier to understand and navigate in Android 12. The battery optimization option that takes you to this page is no longer available in Android 12. And the battery usage info has been moved from the bottom towards the top. Let's go back one step and then go inside open by default. From here, you can set which links the app can open by default. And the first difference is in the open supported links. Now it's a toggle. Previously, it was a menu. And when you tap on it, it will give you three options, either to allow to open supported links, ask every time or don't allow app to open links. So 
these two options we no longer have we can only turn the feature on or off the supported links option is now called verified links and it shows how many links you have in the list previously when you tap on supported links it will show you the list you have to do the same in android 12 you need to tap on the info button but tapping on the menu item itself doesn't do anything even the checkbox so i'm not sure if this is the normal behavior or it's a bug in the os and there is a new add link button which will allow you to add more supported links to the app Currently, all I have is one grayed out link because it's already set to open in the Google News app, but normally you should be able to do this. This button doesn't even exist in Android 11. And finally, the clear defaults button now looks different. It's bigger and it's called clear default preferences. Let's go back again. And in Android 12, you will see a new option here called alarms and reminders that doesn't exist in Android 11. So by this, you can be more specific about what type of actions this app can take on your phone instead of having one permission that includes multiple actions underneath it. And I found another new permission in Android 12 that I didn't see before. It's located under the special app access page. So let's go to the same one on both versions. And you will see a new item here called media management apps. And currently it only includes Google Photos. And I also found some tweaks in the existing list. First, the battery optimization access is no longer available. And we used to have two items for notifications. One is called adaptive notifications that doesn't give you any options. And the other one is called notification access. But now in Android 12, it's only one item called device and app notification. Here you can also see the same alarms and reminders access I showed you earlier, but this one will show you the full list of apps. Now let's talk about the differences under notifications. So I will go to the same page on both. The first change here is the rename of suggested actions and replies option. It's now called enhanced notifications. And there is a new quick shortcut for the device and app notifications access. And instead of going back to the main page, then special app access and notification access. Next, under sound and vibration, when you try to set a new ringtone for your phone, you will see a totally different page that supports material view. Everything is now organized in a list view instead of the grid. Plus, you can see how many sounds under each category, which wasn't the case before. Google also added a new category here called Material Adventures that includes 14 new sounds. This new category is available for all different types of notifications. So, for example, when you go to the default notification sound, you will see Material Adventures as well. And also under the default alarm sound and finally it will highlight the category of the currently set ringtone so you can easily go back to the same place which wasn't the case before next the storage and the first change is in the graph used we have a much bigger font also the manage storage button and the smart storage toggle are now gone and all we have here is something called free up space that takes you right away to the files app you can also activate the same smart storage option in android 12 but using the files app by going to settings and you will find the option right here. So overall in Android 12, everything related to the storage is now linked to the files app instead of having the separate buttons and toggles for activating the same options. Also the storage categories in Android 12 are more specific and easier to understand. So for example, we have two separate categories for videos and images and instead of having them together under one category called photos and videos. Other apps is now called apps. The files category is now called documents and other. We no longer have the movie and the TV apps category, but there is a new one here called the trash. Tapping on it will take you to the trash folder in the files app. The music and audio category is now called audio. And finally, I noticed a big discrepancy between the two when it comes to the system usage. Here it says 14 GB versus only 1.1 in Android 12. Now let's move on to privacy and there are some new toggles here. The camera and the microphone access. Both can block the two sensors for all apps which is the same thing as using the quick settings tiles. And there is another one here called show clipboard access. Activating this option will show you a toast notification at the bottom of the screen every time an app accesses your clipboard in the background. Under ads, there are some differences. So for example, the opt out of ads personalization is now called delete advertising ID. The ads by Google menu item is now replaced with a learn more hyperlink both will take you to the same exact page. Other than this, they are exactly the same. Last thing to show you here is the device personalization services is now called Android System Intelligence. Next, the styles and the wallpapers menu item is now called wallpaper and the style and it's located in the settings main page instead of being under the display settings. The accounts menu is now called passwords and accounts. From here, you can access your saved passwords in Google account plus the autofill service settings, which wasn't the case before. Under system and then date and time, 
you will see a new toggle here called use location to set time zone that doesn't exist in Android 11. Those two toggles got renamed to set time automatically and set time zone automatically. Now let's talk about the new accessibility settings. First, everything is now organized differently. So for example, when you go to text and display, you will see most of these options are grouped together, which will make things easier to navigate. Plus each menu item got its own icon, which wasn't the case before. So let's talk about the new features under text and display. There's a new toggle called bold text that will change your font throughout the OS. Under the main page, there is a new menu item here called extra dim. This is a new feature in Android 12 that I talked about already in my previous video, but I didn't show you the settings page. From here, you can activate or deactivate the feature. You can also use the extra dim quick settings style. When you activate it, you have a slider here to choose the intensity. You can make it dimmer or brighter. You also have the option to keep the feature turned on even if you restarted the device. And finally, you can add a floating button to the screen so you can toggle it from here. Next, under magnification, there is a new menu item called magnification type. From here, you can choose to magnify the full screen, part of a screen or a switch between full and partial screen. You can also add a floating button to quickly activate or deactivate the feature. So let me show you the two different ways. The first one is called partial magnification. So you get a floating window to place it anywhere on the screen and you can switch back to the full screen view using this toggle at the bottom right corner and back again to the partial view and that's pretty much it. Now let me show you how to modify the settings for those floating buttons. So let's say you activated the shortcut for the extra dim and the magnification feature. Now there is a new menu item that will allow you to change some settings for these buttons. First of all, you can choose the size you have a small and large. There is another option here called fade when not in use, which will make it a little bit transparent if you are not using the shortcuts and you can choose the intensity of this effect on the shortcuts. And that's pretty much it. We got a new menu item called system controls that combines system navigation, power button and scroll, auto rotate in addition to the one handed mode of Android 12 all together under the same page. The time and controls menu combines auto click, touch and hold delay and time to take action. The options under audio and on screen text are now separated under two different categories, captions and audio. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I didn't mention in my initial video about Android 12. So I hope you like it. And if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.